Praise the Lord, everybody. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. This morning's message is entitled, Stepping into a New Season. Stepping into a New Season. Amen. We are so blessed and privileged here in sunny, sunny South Africa to step into a new season. Amen. We are in spring now. Amen. This is the first Sunday of spring and we are so blessed. We feel good in our spirits just looking at around and, and seeing already the weaver birds starting to build their nests. We're starting to hear the birds chirping in the trees. We're starting to see the, the new leaves, as you can see on my left hand side here, the new leaves starting to emerge from the trees. We're starting to feel a bit warmer. Yeah, in Durban, we're so blessed. We can now wear our shorts again. Amen. We can now go uh, out in, in the beautiful sun. And we are also uh, experiencing rain after a long, long winter. We've just gone through the cold winter and we are now with renewed hope, with renewed joy in our hearts, knowing that spring is here. Amen. And, you know, brothers and sisters, just like we see seasons that we go through, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, so it is in our lives. We go through seasons. And when we begin to see the change in season, we begin to think about our spiritual lives. We begin to think about our lives in general, about seasons of our lives and how we go from one season to another. We transition from winter to spring in our lives. Amen. And so this morning's word is all about stepping into a new season. And I pray that you are excited about this word just as much as I have been excited about it. Amen. The word of God is, is so awesome. It's alive and active, searching the desires and intents of our hearts. And you know, we, we have so much to glean from the scriptures, so much to learn from the scriptures. And so if you have your Bibles, can you kindly turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And we're going to read from verse 1. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. And it reads as follows. It says, To everything there is a season. Amen. We could possibly stop right there. To everything there is a season. It goes on to say, A time to every purpose under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance amen we are so blessed, brothers and sisters, with all of these times. You know, there's a season for everything, the Bible tells us here in Ecclesiastes. And if we go right down to verse 11 of Ecclesiastes, it says, He, he being God, he hath made everything beautiful in his time, in his season. Amen. Everything beautiful. In his season. So yeah, we can see, brothers and sisters, that everything in our lives has a season. In the overall plan of Almighty God, everything that we go through has a season. Bless the name of the Lord. You know, brothers and sisters, we go through so many seasons in our lives. Seasons of doubt. Seasons of despair. Seasons of grief. Seasons of joy. Seasons of failures, seasons of success, seasons of planting and, and toiling, and seasons of reaping, reaping the rewards, reaping a harvest. Amen. To everything, there is a season. Now, brothers and sisters, in this short message this morning, 
I want to bring to you five points, five thoughts regarding seasons. Amen. All based on the word of God here in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And number one, brothers and sisters, the first point we must remember is that seasons don't last forever. Amen. We can take heart of this fact, brothers and sisters, that seasons don't last forever. On one side, our winter, our winter season, sometimes winter can seem like the longest season in our lives. Our winters represent the lean periods in our lives. The times of testing, the times of trials, the times of temptations, the times of lack in our lives. You know, winter, there's not an abundance of food in general as much as summer and spring. And it's a time of lack. Maybe it's a time of poverty, a time of failures in our lives. You know, uh, the lean periods in our lives. But brothers and sisters, we can take heart as children of the living God. That our winters will not last forever. Just as we've seen that spring has now come. Our spring in our lives. Our spring in our spiritual lives. Our spring in our physical lives. Our financial uh, situations will spring to life again. Amen. We have this hope. We have this hope that God will bring us through our winter periods in our lives. Our lean periods. And give us a hope and a renewed joy. On the flip side, brothers and sisters, our summers can't last forever. We can't expect the abundance to last forever. We have to always remember that our abundance can be taken away from us. Our season of abundance can be taken away and we need to acknowledge who gives and who takes away. Amen. Is the Lord. It is the Lord who gives and it's the Lord who takes away. Amen. Job said, naked I have come into the world and naked I will depart from it. Amen. He is the giver of every good gift, brothers and sisters. So we need to take heart. As much as we've gone through the winter in our lives, spring is going to come again. There's going to be the dawning of a brand new day. We need to remember that there's always a brighter day. Amen. There's always a brighter day. The sun will shine again even though it's cold in our winters even though it's dark and dreary in our winters it's overcast and it's it's all dark and gloomy it's cold but we need to always keep in mind that the sun will shine again there will always be a brighter day in the future there'll be a new chapter a new season in our lives amen bless the name of the lord even this chapter, my uh, 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 brothers and sisters, even this season of this pandemic, even this COVID-19 virus shall pass. This season, this flu season, it's called a flu season because it's only a season, it's only a set time and then it's going to pass. Brothers and sisters, we can already see a ray of hope. Yeah, in South Africa, we're beginning to see the numbers declining. Bless the name of the Lord. We're beginning to see a, the, the, the ray of light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, there may be a threat of a second wave, of a third wave. But we know that God, amen, will cause all things to work in our favor. He will cause this to pass. He will cause us to walk through this uh, season amen even as the children of israel made it through the waters of the jordan river even as they made it through the waters brothers and sisters the waters were parted and they made it through on bare ground so we believe that god will get us through this pandemic season to the other side amen brothers and sisters we are trusting the lord we have a hope that spring shall come again amen my point number two, brothers and sisters, is that there is a reason for every season. Amen. There is a reason for every season. And sometimes, you know, it's difficult to understand the winters of our lives. It's difficult to understand why we are going through these phases of depression, why we are going through the season of lack in our lives where nothing seems to go right. Maybe you can't get a job. You, you're finding it hard to find a job. 
Maybe your pockets have run dry during this lean period of winter, brothers and sisters, but every season has a reason. Amen. The Lord has a plan and a purpose for every season in our lives. Amen. Just like we have no control over the physical seasons, the environmental seasons, uh, or, or control over our environment, what season we find ourselves in. You can't control winter. You can't control summer. God controls the seasons. And so it is in our lives. The Lord has full control over the seasons of our lives. And sometimes He allows us to go through those winter seasons. Amen. And you know, brothers and sisters, in the winter seasons, in the, in the, just before spring comes, any good farmer will tell you, or any good gardener will tell you that now is the time for pruning. Now is the time for cutting back in anticipation for the spring. Amen. What do we need to cut from our lives in anticipation for a better day, for a turnaround in our season? For anticipation of the spring in our lives. Amen. What do we need to cut off? Do we need to lay those sins aside? Those weights that easily beset us. Now's the time for pruning. The Lord, the Bible tells us, chastises those who He loves. God chastises us. God teaches us. God, God instructs us. God uh, uh, chastises us. Amen. He takes us through painful periods. Cutting back is a painful a process and a painful process for the for the plants for the crops but when the fruit tree is not cut back when they are not pruned they will bear just an average crop of fruit maybe they'll just bear a few maybe they'll just be twiggy they'll be leggy as they call them they'll be full of long thin uh, you know, branches, but no fruit. But when we are pruned during this period, just before the spring, we are cut back. Amen. I was in the garden the other day and I looked out and the bushes were still quite high from the previous growing season. And we decided to crop them back in anticipation because we know once, the, once they are cropped back, they will come back more luscious in the rainy seasons, in the growing seasons. They'll become, they'll become much more full full of many branches beautiful green branches amen as we can see in the picture behind me and so brothers and sisters this pruning period amen god allows us go, to go through these painful pruning periods where we are in anticipation just before the spring comes we have to go through these testing periods these trials tribulations in the winter period or the winter season of our lives amen but let's take heart brothers and sisters for the bible tells us here in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 it says for our light affliction which is for a moment it's for a season worketh for us more and more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory amen Let's read that one more time. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. It says, For our light affliction, which is for a moment, worketh for us more and more, an exceeding eternal weight of glory. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, For the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. In us, amen, in you and I, amen. The suffering, the if affliction that you and I go through, the Bible also tells us that many are the afflictions of the righteous, the pruning, amen, the affliction, the persecution. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from, delivers us rather from them all, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, so let's take, let's take heart. In the light afflictions that come our way. For our light afflictions are producing in us an exceeding eternal weight of glory. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, 
but not in despair. Amen. We are persecuted, but we are ne never forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. We are, you know, brothers and sisters, during these lean periods, during the winter periods, it may feel like we're crushed. It might feel like we're cast down. It might feel like we're forsaken. But the word of the Lord tells us, yeah, that we might be troubled on every side, but we are not distressed. We might be persecuted, but we are never forsaken. God said in his word that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. Brothers and sisters, let's remain steadfast. Let's be, remain faithful to our God in the lean season, in the winter season, because the spring is coming. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them the spring is coming. Look at yourself and tell yourself the spring is coming. Amen. Spring in our lives will spring forth. Amen. A new thing. God will do a new thing for us. Amen. Out of the blue, a new thing will come. Amen. Let's remain steadfast. And God will give us the victory. Amen. Number three is to never make permanent decisions based on temporary seasons. Amen. Never make permanent decisions based on temporary seasons. Never judge somebody else also based on the season that they are in. Amen. Sometimes we're quick to look at people and cast judgment on them. But they are just going through a season. Amen. But brothers and sisters, God doesn't judge us on our seasons. He looks at our lives in entirety. The, they say every dog has his day. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm reminded of a story. A man had four sons. And one day he wanted to teach them a lesson about life and about seasons. And judging others. So he, he, he says... He, he gathered his four sons together and he says, Okay, boys, each one of you I'm going to send to look at this tree. There's a certain tree on a hill just outside the country, the, this town that we're living in. And I want you to come back and come back and tell me what you think about this tree. So he sends the first boy in winter. And this first son goes to look at the tree in winter and he comes back with a report and he sends the other one in spring, the other one in summer. And the fourth son he sends in autumn, amen, or fall if you're living in the States. So each son came back with a report. So the first boy, he says, you know what, father, I looked at this, this uh, tree and this tree is a no good tree. This tree needs to be cut down. I went there, it looks like it's dead. There's no leaves. There's nothing happening on that tree. It's just full of dead branches, dead, you know, bent branches, twigs that are ready to fall off. That tree is a write-off. The second son says, mm, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I disagree because when I went to the tree, I thought the tree was full of promise. The tree was very promising. It was full of uh, buds. It was full of new leaves. Amen. It was full of these bright green new leaves. So this tree is, has a lot of promise. The third son says, that's strange because when I looked at that tree, that tree was the best tree I had ever seen in my life because it was full of leaves, green leaves, and not only leaves, but this same tree that you're talking about was full of flowers, the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen, fragrant flowers. I could smell that beautiful fragrance from a mile away of this tree. And the fourth son says, are you sure we're speaking about the same tree? Because when I went to see the tree, it was full of these humongous pears, avocado pears, beautiful, massive, size like soccer balls, like footballs, the size of these, these pears. That's all I could see on the trees. I couldn't even see the leaves. I could just see these humongous pears. So the father got his sons together and he began to explain to them about judging others based on the season that they are in. And how we should never make permanent decisions based on the season that we are in. Brothers and sisters, we are to never give up. Never give up. Because in winter, if you give up in winter, you will miss the promise of spring. You will miss the beauty of the summer. 
and the fulfillment of autumn, the fruit. Amen. You, you will miss all of this if you give up in the middle of your winter. And so many times, brothers and sisters, we go through the winter in our lives and we think it's the end of the world. We think that we will never amount to anything. We think, we so often think that this is the end of the world for us, that our lives will never get better. We always wonder, and maybe it's been years, but I, I just want to encourage you this morning, child of God, is to just hang on, to just hold on to Jesus. Amen. Just hold on to Jesus. If you are holding on by a thread, I want to encourage you to just hold on to the thread as long as it's the hem of his garment. Amen. As we heard in the message last week, just hold on to the hem of the garment of Jesus. Amen. And he will give you a new season in your life. Even as he brought healing to the lady with the issue of blood who suffered for 12 years, your season will change. He will give you a new season. He will cause the, the, the new leaves to come out. Amen. And give you a new season of spring. And your winter season will come to an end. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We are not defined by our seasons. Brothers and sisters, we are not defined by our seasons. We are children of the living God. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith, amen, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And even though we don't see it, brothers and sisters, we believe it, amen, by faith. We claim it and we rest and we, we stand on the word of God, amen. God says that we are the heads and not the tails. We are above only and not beneath. We are the lenders and not the borrowers, amen. Uh, David said he was young and now he's old. He's never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Amen. We are the seed of Abraham. We are a blessed nation. Amen. God has called us blessed. Amen. We are blessed to be a blessing. Other nations will be blessed because of you, because you are a child of God and your father owns a cattle of a thousand hills. Amen. Let's just stand on the word of God, brothers and sisters. Number four, our point number four is that God works by appointment. God works by appointment. We need to understand how God works. Amen. God is a VIP. Amen. He's a very important person. And you know, you can't just walk into a VIP's office and just, uh, you know, make demands and, and so forth. VIPs have schedules. VIPs, amen, work by appointment. You got to make an appointment. Amen. Yes, the Bible tells us that we can now come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. Because of what Christ has done for us. Amen. The veil is torn in two. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. But we need to understand that God works by appointments. He has a season. An appointment, brothers and sisters, is a fixed time or season. Amen. God works by divine appointment divine seasons amen good seasons and bad seasons the bible says that in all things all things are working together all things the good things and the bad things the good seasons and the bad seasons are all thrown into the spot and they're all working together for the good of those who love god who are called according to his purpose amen habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 says for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Amen. The vision is for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Amen. Wait for it. Yes, it's taking long to come. Your spring may be taking long. But the Bible tells us here to wait for it. It says because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Amen. The time, the season is going to come. Your season is around the corner. Amen. Your season of breakthrough is around the corner. Amen. If you believe that, just give the Lord a shout of praise. Just give the Lord a clap offering. Just shout amen. Just say something, uh, a word of praise to him in the comment section below. Amen. Just begin to praise the name of the Lord. Trusting and believing that your season is about to change, brothers and sisters. Amen. 
The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Let me say that one more time. God is faithful. He who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may, bear, may be able to bear it. Amen. God will always make a way of escape for us. Amen. He will always cause us to triumph. We just need to trust Him. We just need to remain faithful to Him. Amen. Come what may, no matter what season we find ourselves in, especially in the winter season, trust Him because after winter comes the spring. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let's not uh, grow weary. Amen. Let's remain steadfast. And our final point this morning, brothers and sisters, is about the Word of God. The Word we must look at as a seed. Even in our scripture in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes tells us that there's a time for sowing. There's a time for planting a seed. And then there is also a time for reaping. Amen. The word of God comes forth every week. And we believe the word of God by faith. But just as the word is a seed, we can't expect the word to germinate right now. No man plants a seed and expects to reap the fruit immediately. Amen. Today we will plant a seed, we will water the seed, we will fertilize the seed, we will make sure that it's kept moist for a period and then that seed will eventually germinate. Maybe it will take two days, maybe it will take two weeks, maybe a month, maybe six months, maybe two years. Seeds have dormant periods. But eventually that seed will germinate. Let's not lose hope amen let's remain steadfast let's trust and believe that the seed will germinate and then eventually brothers and sisters that seed that one seed will grow into a beautiful tree and bear much fruit in our lives fruitfulness success in our lives in whatsoever we put our hands to do we'll be blessed we'll turn to gold amen we'll be blessed our lives will be blessed with joy, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, it says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap a harvest if we faint not. Amen. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, being confident, that means believing, trusting the Lord. Being confident of this very thing. That he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's have confidence. Let's believe the word. Let's believe the Lord and take him at his word. The Bible tells us that God watches over His Word. Amen. He's watching over this Word that will germinate in your lives. He's watching over this Word that will eventually bring fruit. We don't know when spring will come, but we know who is in control of the seasons of our lives. Brothers and sisters, let's take heart this morning with the changing seasons. We are in a new era. We're in a new chapter. A new dawn has come. The spring has come forth in our lives brothers and sisters god is giving us the victory amen god is turning our lives around he's transforming our lives all we gotta do is wait on him trust and believe him serve him in faithfulness and god will give us the victory brothers and sisters i pray that you are blessed by this word go forth and be fruitful amen have a productive week have a wonderful Sunday afternoon with your family. And I pray that the, the fruit, amen, will, will come forth in your life in abundance. In all spheres of your life. In all 
um, uh, you know, parts of your life, be it your spiritual life, be it your career, be it your physical life. Amen. God will cause us to triumph in all aspects of our lives. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen.